you don't sit down. That's the attitude of your life. They will tell you off the highway. And the baby came from the bed. And I remember the boy was wearing blue dress. And he had some wounds all over the body. And they were smelling. And as the mother opened the bed and door, came into the city where we were standing there, she handed me over the baby. And I took the child. Put him here. We closed eyes. I just began to pray a few words. The Holy Spirit came into the room and said, It shall be well. The mother says, Sister, do you believe? She said, Yes. yes. I said, Here is your baby. Yes. And the king of the child. She took the baby. She the baby. And said, Thank you, Pastor. She took the baby back to the bedroom. And I left. Yeah. Within a week, she sent me a video clip of a baby who was dating. No. 
came here, I also went to meet them. The demon came from the congregation. And this woman was like, Professor, he said, when I had a motion, I'm going to find an ass. So I looked, no, I believe in prophecies, but this is an evil spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So I said, Elijah was led by crows. Yes. Out there at the river. And I was at the dead. And there was grapes cast there at that time. So when I tried to start my car, then I realized the lights were on. So I called our deacon brother, brother Chikundu there. I said, please come at a certain place here. So he drove it came. As he was coming, you make the problem bigger truck. And he stopped me. He said, Can I have three crates of bread? They said, Do you have a shop? He said, No. Do you have a taxi? He said, No. He said, ah, No, we don't give to individuals. We give to people's supermarket shops at least a touch. But okay, we'll just give you for today three crates. So he came, so Jamba jump started me. Then he said, Ah, person, I put some bread here. I said, Bread? Without shops here? Somebody said, That's what you're preaching about. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Nine o'clock, I went to church to drop some instruments. So I left the things there. I began to preach when the service time came. And I got excited, you know. Then I shared part of it. I said, There's someone here <laughs> that I saw in a vision. <laughs> There's someone here yes. that I saw in a vision. Yes. So I left it like that. That was Sunday. Wednesday, the sister of this sister came and said, Pastor, who did you see the vision? I said, it's your young sister. And I said, the day she'll be delivered, she'll be sitting at a certain place. But don't tell me, but I've told you to be your witness. So, but the fun part of it, this sister had got a child. He had a child, a young child. So they had to stay together at my left, at the corner. But in the vision, I saw it to my right. So there is no way she would change your place. Because you had to help the sister with the child. So on Thursday, I went to Highlands of Manchester and I asked the trustees to give us another projector that they had left using. I wanted the people to, to hear the prophet. So we saw those videos of the prophet, the deep going to the deep and so forth. That's Wednesday. That's Friday, I mean. Now, because the projector was to the right, that sister now told her, ah, we now need a projected church, which is projecting from that side there. So sad I don't want to sit with my sister there. I want to sit where I'll be able to see what's been projected. <laughs> You don't mind such a thing. Yes. Hallelujah. I know the Bible says the rest is not to the spirit of the Lord, to the man of Israel, but time and chance happen. The summer's chance today. So finally I began to preach. And I and all had been forgotten. And she's sitting there. I began to preach. So I said just some I had come from the outreach and people were delivered. So I said, we can't just go and cast the devil there in the outreach meetings and leave demons in this church here. The moment I said that, I saw your face change. Mm-hmm. And I said, what's going on here? Then it just happened the way it happened in the car. And that was it. So one time I was sharing a testimony. When, when this woman took a job to the hospital, when she heard the news that the resurrection is taking place, no, but apparently when they dropped the mountain there, the people around they said we want to see what this American evangelist will do about this place. So when the prophet was watching, he began to realize, I have seen these rocks before. I have seen this place before. Then he called the student and said, Brother, open your Bible. And he opened. He said, Can you read? And he read the reading was there will be a resurrection of a young boy wearing blue clothes 
the heat trapped there in automobile. The Lord will bring you back to life. He said, this is the place. This is the day. This day. This vision will be fulfilled. You know, you can pray three hours. You just need to say, Lord Jesus, according to the vision that you showed me back home. Then he said,
finish this testimony of this dark woman, then he comes. We left it on the light, is On the channel. Yeah. I know where I left it. Yes. <laughs> so, as I was talking in that house, I said, the prophet told that woman, if it witches to believe in their eyes. Mm-hmm. That boy I'm talking about, in Chipinga, I asked him, how do you travel? He said, our pastor, if you want to come to Harari, we just take this cloth, this jacket that my grandmother gave me, and just roll it like this. Mm-hmm. And we go right on top of it. Yeah. And we come so smart. He said, pastor, there's such traffic jam. <laughs> not of air and plastic jet and British Airways. Okay. No. There's traffic here out there. I said, really? Then he said, no. They said, we don't want to come to Haran. The people, they don't sleep. So when we land, we don't want to be identified. So we normally go to those places. But otherwise, if it wasn't that, we don't get into the bus. He said, Lord, help us as Christians. Yeah. This guy is operating the dead pool system yes. <laughs> of the darkness, of the dark world. That's right. Amen. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Amen. Can you imagine a young man sitting here from the dark powers? is operating the supernatural. Then I said, okay, before I pray for you, bring all your things that you use. And he brought them. Those curious arts that poor bed, I saw them. Not only one person, I'm not quite a number. I preached among witches and yet charging the head all with them. And they give up. <laughs> so what surprised me? We came with some, you know, a broomstick and some things. They asked, what do you use this thing for? He said, you know what this uh, when people are using the canoes in the dead, you know, they will like say, that's how we, we do it also out there. When we want to tell you, you have to do this. <laughs> you, you may think he's lying and making a story. The things are real. Yeah. Yeah. If you think demons, the devil is an evil spirit, you are deceived. Yeah. If you think the Holy Ghost is a good thought, you are deceived. Yeah. If you think a service is a good ceremony, you are deceived. Yeah. Yeah. This is the unfailing realities of the living yeah. God among yeah. us today. Yeah. So, and he came with the black chip. I said, what do you use this chip for? The little creature I said, when we get into the house and people are asleep, we make this thing with its wings too. Just have some beats on the people twice. Bam, bam, bam. You will not wake up. And if you want to take you and ride on you, we can go with you. I said, yeah. I said, okay, so we have to kill this little thing. But as we were going, then the pastor says, no, 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 Lloyd. You go just be beyond in the field away from. Then I asked the knife thing. As we were going, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, don't you cut this chick. He let him kill it himself. If you do it, you hear your child is gone in her there. <laughs> so I said, Yeah, man, you are going to kill this animal. <laughs> I was surprised at how we, we could catch every stage. Yeah. Those things were hard to bend <laughs> with the petrol. We took some time. The smoke was strange. Yeah. Now, if witchcraft, they have to have faith in their things. Yeah. How much more should we have faith in our religion? Do you know things are happening now? Yes. How many believe? Amen. I'm closing on this. Amen. So I, then the prophet says, okay, look here, and he looked with deep consecration. The thing moved. And the faith of the girl was raised up. And you prayed. And she was healed. So I say to these people in the house, like this light here, a bow, we tell it to move. So I looked at it. I don't know until now if I had said it should move, what was going to happen. But I think I have an idea. 
Because what happened later proved what could he have, have happened to the Bible. Yes. That's where a lot will be left behind. So I looked at the Bible and said, like this now. Then I stopped. I said, but friends, what purpose and use and what reason to make this power turn around when we have someone who is dumb here who can't speak? Why can't we stand the same power in the same everything which is needed to turn that power and put it there? So everyone smiled and said, that's a point. But they were criticizing all my testimonies. Then I said, let's pray. So I went to lay hands on that woman there. And those demons from the hospital came. And she was coming with a real fire. Then I asked him to really be vigilant. Then I said, let's put it on a mattress or somewhere. Then we moved into a bedroom there. I was the last to enter into the bedroom. As I was walking in there, the Holy Ghost said, just rebuke that spirit of sacrificing children. So I just stepped in. I looked at her. I didn't pray. I said, you sacrifice your spirits. Come out of this woman. I literally saw her opening her mouth. And the tongue began to loosen up. Little by little. And increasing the speed. Then a voice saying, Dabo Mosia! I let you go. I let you speak. So what she said, I turned around to go back to the city room. And I saw my finger in the air. And a voice said, It is done. Then I got to the corridor. I saw my finger in the air. And a voice said, It is done. So I tried to look around, who is speaking here? Mm-hmm. Who is saying it is done? And I realized yes. I was promised. Yes. So I went and said, well, She came. I looked at the woman. I said, My parents, how many children do you have? So she lifted her four fingers to identify. I said, No, the time to speak in science. It's over. Yeah. Uh, how many kids do you have? And she said, four. Yeah, oh. yeah. I also said, oh. <laughs> then I stopped. I said, can you say, Mari Makanaka? I don't know how God chose that word. Yes. Then I saw this, Mari Makanaka. I said, no, I don't believe it. Is it? Because the prophecy is a paradox. <laughs> It's something incredible, yet true. Then he says, a paradox causes unbelief. God can do things until you even doubt them. But it will not be reversed. Thank you. 
When I see yeah. this extracting the river Jordan, yeah. uh, a preacher saw the pillar of fire coming out from a jar. Yeah.
speak your desire. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Let's close our eyes. The presence of the Lord is here. Thank you, Jesus. You can start speaking for how to say in this place. In your heart, quietly. You know what you are in need of. I want you to pray for me so Change the 
Jesus. Jesus, we have given you children. 
is not the boy of sin, that is the Holy Ghost is not. There is no enchantment that there is here. There is no paradise, there is no mysterious that shall happen in your life. You shall have dreams if you are paradise.
Thank you. 